In this video, we're going to take a look at how to run an IPC D356 netlist comparison in CAM350 and DFM stream. The method for doing this has changed with the release of version 14.x. Uh, we've made it easier for both the DFM user as well as the DRC user to go ahead and run netless comparison. Under the Analyze ribbon, the first two options are your netless tools and the external nets. The external nets is where you will actually run your comparison. So from this one pane, you can import an IPC D356 or 356A file, extract a netlist from your graphics, compare it to an external or reference netlist, ignore any non-connects or no-connects as various CAD systems will output those, and then of course the results will be saved to your Air Explorer. You could even save your netless compare to streams. And like always, you can run netless compare in streams if you prefer to run it there. So let's take a look at this process. I'm going to import some Gerber and NC. One thing that's important when bringing in Gerber and NC is that you define your layers. So you'll notice that when we get to the next step, not only are they defined, but because they were defined, CAM350 goes ahead and puts them in the correct order. In our auto import process, if the IPC D356 netlist is in the same directory as your Gerber and NC, we will go ahead and import it at the same time. Important to this process in version 14.x is that any partial vias be defined before we extract a netlist. So in this case, I do have some partial vias, and I'm just going to go ahead and drag these drills so that they show which layers they go through. And then the netlist extraction knows how to properly extract a netlist from this data. Also, we can define the plating characteristics here at the same time so that we don't extract a netlist for a, uh, a non-plated hole that might have pads. So my unplated holes are identified as non-plated here. I'm going to hit finish and it will prompt me to extract a netlist. This is the default. You can turn this off if you need to. Um, but it's always a good practice, so we'll go ahead and say yes to that. And it comes up with the extract netlist uh, pane, and you can go ahead and just run the extraction at this point. You don't have to, but uh, if you follow these steps that I've just given you, it's going to make it much easier to do a netlist comparison. And really the last step to do the comparison is to go back to the external nets option here. And we've already done the importing of the IPC 356. And we've already extracted a netlist from the graphics. So really all that's left is to do the comparison. But instead of unchecking those boxes, I can always just hit Run. And it's going to pop up and say, hey, you didn't specify where your IPC netlist is. And I'm just going to tell it to continue because we've already loaded it. It's going to go through and re-extract the netlist from the graphics. And then it's going to do the comparison between the two. And of course, that's what you hope to see each time. Now let's do the same process with intelligent data. Intelligent data has the same concept, uh, IPC 2581 ODB++, of having a reference netlist and then a netlist that's reflective of the graphics, just like CAM350 does. So typically we can import either ODB++ or IPC 2581. 
and we can go straight to comparison in a lot of cases just go straight to analyze and just choose the comparison option down here so I don't need to do either this or this but because it is a translation it's always recommended to re-extract a netlist from the graphics so we are going to leave that on and as we've saw before if there already is a reference netlist we can either just ignore this or we can uncheck the box okay so it extracted a netlist and then compared it to the reference netlist let's take a look at the tables so when you do import intelligent data you will have both a set of Gerber extracted nets. Now often these will have the intelligent net names from a uh, 2581 or ODB file and then you'll have the reference net list which does have the intelligent net names. Uh, whether you brought in Gerber and NC or you brought in ODB or 2581 you can always update these net names to be reflective of your reference net list that option is right here under Netlist Tools. Overwrite your CAM net names. Of course, you want a good comparison when you do that, but it does add some intelligence to Gerber and NC especially. I'm now going to cause some issues just so you see what happens when there is a failure. So I'm going to delete this trace segment right here. And then I'm going to reconnect this trace from here to this pad. Uh, I can query this if I want to so that I get the correct decode that's being used. That's just a quick tip for when you are editing. And now I'm just going to go to insert, add line, make sure my object snap is turned on, which it is. Grab the center of this and take it to the center of this pad. Now we're going to go back to Analyze and run this process one more time. Important that Extract is turned on at this point because we need it to re-extract the netlist from the graphics. And as expected, we got some failures. And as I've mentioned in other videos, now all of the failures, whatever analysis you do, show up in the Air Explorer. And as expected, we do have an open. You can see the highlighting there. I find it easier to turn off layers and then look at them one at a time when I'm initially looking for this type of problem. And we also have a short. And I should tell you that uh, when we do have a open or short, we try to help you by how we show the uh, the air markers. I'm going to come over here and turn off the layers for just a second so that we just see the air markers. So in the case of a short, we highlight the net points in gray and white. In the case of an open, we're going to highlight the two nets differently, one in gray one in white. So using this can often help you find the location of a problem. I'm going to turn the layers back on and show you another way that might help you and that is to use the nets and external nets in our tables and just look for these nets. So I could come out here and look for net 134 for instance and then highlight it in here or I could choose nets 133 and 134 or I could grab the external nets and highlight those or I can actually highlight all of them so this makes it an easier way to track down the problems when we do find problems in Netlist Extract. Uh, one of the biggest issues we see is just misregistered netlists. So once you get it registered, and there are other videos that show you how to move the data, um, 
then you can run the netlist comparison and again if you have failures this is a good way to track those down. So to summarize no matter what level of CAM 350 or DFM stream that you have if you have these two panes available to you you can go ahead and run netlist comparison this easy way as opposed to the uh, jumping through several menus that we did in older versions. And streams is also a possibility in uh, any level of CAM 350 and DFM stream that do have the analysis capabilities.